Supercharged Science Cast, Episode 7, Solar Astronomy. Hello and welcome to the Supercharged Science Cast, our weekly science and math classes for kids, parents, and teachers where we discover how to do real hands-on science and learn how to use math as a tool in everyday life. Now my name is Aurora and I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm a university instructor, I'm an astronomer, I started flying airplanes when I was young, and I worked for NASA when I was also attending both high school and college at the same time. And I worked as a real rocket scientist in the field and today we're actually going to talk about one of my very favorite things to do in astronomy, which is solar astronomy. Now, before we do that, if you have a question and you'd like to send me an email, you can do so through my website, which is at superchargedsciencecast.com. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to do solar astronomy, and so many people, when they think about astronomy, they think they have to go out somewhere dark, and they have to get a big telescope, which is kind of useless because you usually don't know where to point it. Um, but there's so much that can be done during the daytime, and that uh, during the daytime, the best thing to look at, of course, is the sun. But the trouble is, you can't look straight at the sun with your eyes, and if you look through anything with lenses in it, the sun, you're going to permanently have eye damage if you don't go blind altogether. So you may be thinking, well, what can I possibly do with solar astronomy? And there's actually a number of things you can do, um, none of which require a telescope. But I will show you, if you're interested, some of the different viewing options you can, if you want to look at the sun with your eyes, how to do it in a way that's safe. And one of them is by getting one of these really cheap solar viewers. I got these for like 30 cents at a science museum. And what it's made out of, it's got a real dark filter here that actually filters out most of the light. So the light that does come through, it's just a very thin, thin thread, just a small percentage of the light that comes in. And it's safe to look at the sun. And these are cool because you'll actually see, um, when you look through these at the sun, you'll see a yellow disc. And if you've got really good eyes or you're really young, you'll be able to see little tiny freckles on that disc. You might even be able to make a, a spot or two. Um, most people won't be able to see this, but, but young kids often tell me that they can. So whether I believe them or not, I'm not sure. But <laughs> no, actually, if the sunspot's large enough, you will be able to see it from, from Earth. Now, the sun is about the size of a quarter held out at arm's length. And so if you can imagine that diameter, that's what you're going to be looking at through here. And it'll look kind of like a yellow beach ball. Now, the other type of viewer are the kinds that actually look like a pair of sunglasses and kind of just fit right over your ears like that. And so these are handy because then it leaves your hands free. Okay, now if you want to go a step up and you actually have a telescope, you can put a Bader filter on the end of your telescope, the end where, meaning that not near the eyepiece, but the end where the, um, the light comes into your scope. And on your scope, you can simply put a Bader filter. You can even use it at, to look up it through um, instead of these. And that particular kind of filter is the best one out there. And you can get them um, with the link that's next to this video if you're interested. And they're really inexpensive. And they're, sometimes they're called astrofilm or something like that. So you can check that out as well. Um, but there's another way to look at the sun if you're really into astronomy, and like I am. And this is a Coronado. And so this is a PST. Usually they sell for five to six hundred dollars. And it's a special kind of telescope that doesn't do anything else but one thing. And it does that one thing really well, which is look at the sun. And this will actually show the solar flares that are on the sun. And they look spectacular when there are flares to look at. Um, this uses, uh, this looks at the, the sun in the H alpha what they call H-alpha um, filtering. And so it does that, again, really well, as you can see from the image here. OK, so what do you do if you don't have a science museum, you don't have one of these little cool solar viewer things, you don't have a telescope, you don't have 600 bucks to buy a telescope? How do you look at the sun and do any type of science that's worthwhile? Well, there is another option, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. There is a website you can go to that has data on it that is downloaded every 10 minutes live from a satellite that's currently in orbit around the Earth that looks at the sun constantly. It looks at the sun 24-7, even while you're sleeping, even when it's nighttime here, because it's up in the orbit in a position where it can have constant observation of the sun. And that satellite instrument was designed to only operate for two years, but right now it's up there and it's actually still operating 18 years later. Now, I don't know how much longer it's going to be operating for, but right now what you can do is you can go to their website and download a real image of the sun right now and take data. And that's what I've done. I've printed out an image that I've gotten straight off their website. And you can see the disk of the sun and you see these little dark spots. Those little dark spots, those are sunspots, and those are dark, cool areas where the um, highly magnetic 
uh, fields on the sun's surface. Now this lasts from months to hours. So these might be here for a few hours or they might be here for a few months. It really depends. Um, and they're dark because they're not as bright as the areas around them. And they go down deep into the sun as well as and they also come up. So they're actually three-dimensional. They come up in loops. And so sunspots are the way that we determine how fast the sun is rotating by watching the sunspots as they move across the surface over the course of about two weeks. And so that's what this lab is all about. Now, remember, the sun rotates. It's not rotating like the Earth is rotating, meaning that a person on the equator is rotating in the same way that the person on the, the poles is rotating, in that it's all like one solid body. The sun is a ball of gas, and that hot gas and plasma is constantly being mixed and swirling around. And so what that means is it's got differential rotation, which means the rotation rate at the equator is different than that at the poles. And so that's what this lab is going to show you, which is really cool. So one of the things you're going to do is you're going to download a template, which looks like this. And I actually put mine on a transparency. And so this is a grid, a polar grid of the sun, so it's easier to track because I can simply place it over. Mine's actually a little bit larger than this printout I just made now, but you can size it so it's the right size. And so it'll help me track over the, the, um, the course of the two weeks how the sunspots are moving and how fast they're moving across the surface. And so every day you can go log into Soho and you can print out the daily picture or even you can do it by the hour if you want to. And you can use your, your mapping grid here that's, um, that will help you track as you go across. And there's a whole lab written up on this that you can do in the downloadable student worksheet that goes with today's lab. Anyway, it's a really great way of demonstrating how you can use sunspots to determine the solar rotation. All right. It's time for us to be wrapping things up for today. There is a downloadable student worksheet that I mentioned that goes with this lab that you can use. If you're teachers out there, if you've got a lesson plan around this, or if you're parents and you want to use it with your homeschool kids, or maybe you're just looking for enrichment for your child, an extra activity they can do because they are so excited about science or you want to get them interested in science, this is a great one to do with them. Uh, you'll find it underneath this video on my website, which is at superchargedsciencecast.com. So just enter in your email address, and I will send you the student worksheet that goes with class today. All right, so the next time we get together, we are going to be doing some math, and then after that, we're going to be doing some science. And I can't wait to share it with you because it's actually some of my um, really most popular fundamental classes so we can get going a lot faster um, with some of the other calculations we're going to be doing, especially in math. All right, well, thank you so much for the privilege of being your coach and teacher and guide along the science journey. I hope you enjoy learning about this stuff like solar astronomy just as much as I do. And I want to thank you for allowing me the privilege of sharing what I know with you. Now, if you'd like to replay this class or access those free downloads that I mentioned, just go to www.superchargedsciencecast.com, and I will see you in the lab.